What is going on everyone? It's the Print House and today I have tips and tricks to share with you on making your Lucky Bot ownership experience better, making your Lucky Bot printing experience easier. Guys, I have my tips and tricks split up into five categories. The first one is cleanup, then we have printer cleanup, we have print prepping, printing, and then chocolate work. Guys, I am sure there is something that I'm gonna tell you that is going to make all of this experience a lot better and easier for you guys. Please stick around because this is not a video that you want to miss. All right, guys, so first we're gonna be starting off with cleanup. Guys, I have put about one and a half kilograms of chocolate through my Lucky Bot and every single time I put a new tube in there, I'm like, oh, I can keep the place clean. It's not gonna get messy. Well, that is the worst and most factually incorrect statement that I have ever said because I cannot keep this place clean. It is impossible and I it's not even the Lucky Bot's fault just working with chocolate is incredibly messy. Guys, the first tip, keep paper towels and keep Q-tips nearby. You do not want to keep running to and from the kitchen or to the bathroom to get Q-tips, guys. Just keep them at your printer workstation because I guarantee you will need them. Even if you don't think you're gonna need them, just keep them there anyway. Just keep them in the Lucky Bot box. This way, whenever you install the Lucky Bot, they're already here because you're going to need them. Guys, also, keep a little jug of water, a cup of water, right next to your print station as well. Make sure you're not getting you know, water all over your chocolate, uh, but make sure it's nearby. This way, you can go ahead and you can dip your Q-tip in the water or you can dip your paper towel in the water because sometimes a dry Q-tip or a dry paper towel just won't cut it. Okay, so now we're gonna be moving on to printer cleanup. So when you install the Lucky Bot, every single time you're gonna want to run a damp rag over the entire machine. Run a damp rag on the belts, on the Y-axis, on the X-axis, clean the wheels, clean everything. Everything that is known to collect dust, make sure, guys, make sure you clean it because you do not want to eat something that is going to have potentially have dirt or dust or whatever fall on it. Uh, guys, so make sure you do that. Also, for the actual Lucky Bot itself, guys, when you're done, take the nozzle out and soak it in water. The nozzle is made of 304 stainless steel. It will not rust, but you absolutely will have issues next time you go to print with the Lucky Bot and you haven't printed with it in a few days and the chocolate is super solid and stuck in the nozzle, there will be issues and the nozzle will definitely be clogged. You will have a bunch of under extrusion. I've had this happen to me twice and the only way I could figure out how to clean it out thoroughly well enough was to fill a cup with hot water, drop the nozzle in, and then let it sit there and then come back and then use uh, Q-tips or a nozzle needle or anything, maybe some rolled up paper towels really small inside the nozzle to clean it out. So guys, just when you're done, while the nozzle is still hot, go ahead, remove it, drop it in water, and let it just soak and clean itself. Printing with the Lucky Bot is mesmerizing, it's fun, it's unique, it's cool, it's something that not everyone has the ability to do. But if you do not prepare your chocolate correctly, the probability of you having an issue is very, very high. So guys, I now have some tips to hopefully help you prepare your chocolate in order to make your Lucky Bot perform to the max potential. So the very first thing, guys, is actually preparing the chocolate in the preheating phase. I generally crank my nozzle up to 36 degrees Celsius. I crank my tube up to 36 degrees Celsius, and I just let it sit. Now, Lucky Bot suggests anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, and that should be good enough for your chocolate in order to be printing with. But guys, I have noticed that is a very inaccurate statement, at least for the chocolate that I'm printing with. I do not know what chocolate they print with, with their testing, but for Calibo that I am using, 811, guys, 30 to 45 minutes does not cut it. So normally I turn up to 36 degrees Celsius and I walk away. I walk away for 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, Guys, I wait until I have a mountain of chocolate that has been oozing out of the nozzle. When I have the mountain of chocolate oozing out of the nozzle, I know that my printer, it is ready to print, and that is the only time that I start printing. When you believe that your chocolate is ready to print, go ahead, turn your machine on, go to the move menu in your printer, 
go to the extruder and then crank it up to about three or four millimeters and just watch and see if the chocolate comes out of the nozzle and if it's a full like a full stream a full smooth uh, stream of chocolate with no air in it if you see that you're probably good to go uh, if you don't see that then just keep on doing that until you have a full smooth stream of chocolate and all the air bubbles are out one thing that you need to make sure is to prepare your model correctly if your model is not smooth and flat on the bottom i can guarantee you that it's not going to print very well so with chocolate you're not as forgiving as you are with plastic so plastic you can generally print things at a pretty slight overhang maybe even a 45 degree overhang that you can't always do with chocolate and i have personally experienced models that are a little more organic in shape and they don't lay flat on the print bed and they just fail completely so guys the way i handle that is i take my model into mesh mixer i do a plain cut on the bottom and when i do that i have a, a completely flat bottom that i can work with i can now lay my model flat on the build plate and it will generally print well all right guys now we have some printing tips so guys, what you see on the screen right now is my Linux Penguin. I printed him at 35 degrees Celsius. The way I prepared it was 36 degrees Celsius with the preheat temperature. And then I waited about 10 minutes after I knew my chocolate was ready to be printed with. After 10 minutes, it was fully lowered to 35 degrees Celsius and I could begin printing. So for you guys, I don't know what chocolate you're printing with, but my recommendation is to preheat to 36 degrees Celsius then lower the temperature to 34 degrees. Wait 10 minutes until you know your chocolate has fully lowered to that temperature. And once it's lowered to that temperature, then go ahead and print. And then examine your print. If you believe you are under extruding, then go ahead and raise the temperature. Make your chocolate hotter, make it more liquidy. I'd raise it to 35 and then try and print. If at 34 degrees Celsius you believe you are over extruding, do the same thing, except lower your temperature. So go ahead and lower it and then see what happens and then go from there. One of the biggest things that I didn't have any idea about was print surface. So guys, in the box came these little parchment cubes, these little parchment circles. I don't know about these because it's just a few of them and I don't want to get used to this and then run out and then have no idea. So I had to experiment. So first, you can use parchment paper. The problem with parchment paper is normally it comes on a roll and it's rounded. So if you can find flat sheets of parchment paper, that's good. These are flat sheets of parchment paper and they work fantastic. Probably, I haven't used them, but I've used parchment paper and it works fantastic. But guys, flat sheets of parchment paper are very expensive. So I decided I would try just a standard eight and a half by 11 sheet of copy paper. I cut it in half, I taped it to my sheet, or to my, uh, to my build plate, and I printed on that. And that worked surprisingly well. Now you can untape it and it's paper, so it's flexible, so you can just peel your print right off. It's, it just comes right off. So that is a fantastic surface. However, guys, it does have uh, an absorbing property. The oils and the, the fats and the chocolate will soak into the paper. So you're not gonna be able to use one sheet of paper forever, but that's fine because it's paper, it's incredibly cheap. So eight and a half by 11 copy paper is a fantastic printing surface. Guys, if you think you're going to flip your print bed over and print on the flat, glassy side of your printer, do not do it because I had my chocolate stick incredibly badly and when I tried to use my scraper to scrape the chocolate off, worst decision of my life because I broke the chocolate. It did not like it, it was stuck and it was not gonna come off of that build platform. So do not print on the underside smooth glass surface, your chocolate won't come off. This I do believe is the number one most important tip that I will be giving you today about your Lucky Bot and it is about printing. So it is about your Z offset. Guys, if your Z offset is too small, if your Lucky Bot nozzle is too close to the build plate, your print will fail every single time without exception. It's just gonna fail. It's better off to have your nozzle really high above the build plate and have your chocolate falling a long ways than to have your nozzle really close because 
what happens is the nozzle it just starts to it just like puts a pancake layer of chocolate down and it just like it just like flattens out and it just it will never harden you're always going to be running the nozzle through a bead of chocolate and it's just an awful experience it will not work so guys make sure your z offset is bigger rather than smaller basically what i'm saying is make sure your nozzle is higher above the build plate than lower you do not want it to be close to the build plate all right guys this next tip may or may not apply to you that tip is to not print in a drafting environment so there's a good side and a bad side. When you print with a fan or a drafting environment, your chocolate cools faster. And when that happens, then your print has a smaller chance of failure. But if your print cools way too fast, it's gonna become discolored. The only time I would ever recommend printing with a fan or a drafting environment is if you intend to paint your print with food safe paint. This way the discoloration gets hidden. Now we're gonna be giving you some tips on the chocolate work Guys, the chocolate that you need to use to print with this, it is incredibly expensive and you do not want to waste any amount of chocolate. So anytime you have excess chocolate just laying around, unless it has touched an unsanitary surface, throw it back into a bag and then chop it back up and then remelt it, retemper it, do whatever you have to do, but don't throw it away because I can tell you the amount of products that I have pulled off of the print bed that were successful versus the number of times that I have printed, it's a very skewed ratio. And that's not because it's hard to print with, it's just because I've been trying to learn a bunch and the learning curve is fairly steep. That's why I'm making this video. But so because the learning curve is so steep, there's gonna be a ton of waste. So guys, uh, like places over here where the nozzle drips, take that and throw it into your working bag and then cut it back up later. This next tip is gonna save you a headache, it's gonna save you money and it deals with your tubes. So when you're done printing, if there is still chocolate left in your tube, go ahead and pull the silicone lid up as far as you possibly can immediately while the tube is still liquidy, while the chocolate is still liquidy. Because if you have your silicone lid down here, when the chocolate hardens, the silicone lid is touching the chocolate, it's gonna fuse to the hardened chocolate and it's gonna become impossible to remove. And if you try to remove it while it is fused to the chocolate, then you will break the silicone lid and you'll have to buy more tubes. This is the absolute biggest tip that I can give you in terms of working with chocolate. Now, there's a huge rabbit hole about how to temper chocolate. There is way more than you will ever learn. Guys, the cheat code is your chocolate comes from the factory already tempered. As long as you heat and melt your chocolate in such a way that you do not break the temper of the chocolate, you're good to go. So for me, I take about a cup of pellets or a cup of whatever you wanna call it, dimes that come out of this bag and I pour them into a bowl. I put those in the microwave for 30 seconds and when they come out, I use my laser thermometer, I check the temperature of them, I mix them a little bit and then I put them back in for 30 more seconds and then I check the temperature again and I mix it again and once it's done being mixed I check the temperature again and then I put them back in the microwave for about 15 seconds and then my chocolate is completely entirely melted and it never went above 91 degrees Fahrenheit anyway guys if any of these tips have been at all helpful for you please drop a like and a subscribe. Put some comments down below. Guys, tell me if there's anything else that you wanna see with the Lucky Bot. This has been a really, really awesome, interesting little mini series I did with this. I really love this Lucky Bot. <laughs> the creative freedom you have with it is really outstanding. Anyway, guys, that is all I have for you. If you have any thoughts, like I said, please put them down below. Other than that, guys, I'm out and I'll see you later. <laughs>